22 News at 10. Good evening, everyone, and thank you for joining us. I'm Peter Dubois. And I'm Beth Jones. First tonight, we have new details on a police standoff that resulted in the arrest of two New York men in Bangor Wednesday. Police say it was part of an investigation into the sale of drugs. The Bangor Police Tactical Team, Maine Drug Enforcement Agency, and Homeland Security responded to a multi-unit apartment building at the corner of Parker and 3rd Streets. A standoff ensued. As law enforcement executed a search warrant, MDEA Commander Peter Arno says 34-year-old Sheldon Ray and 32-year-old Tequali Bracey, both from the Bronx, New York, were arrested and charged with aggravated tra trafficking and scheduled drugs. Arno says for the past several months, they've been investigating individuals believed to be involved in the distribution of fentanyl and methamphetamine in Bangor. According to Arno, during the search, law enforcement recovered more than $18,000 in suspected drug proceeds, along with other evidence of drug trafficking. Both Ray and Bracey are being held without bail at the Penobscot County Jail. And we have an update on the trial involving the town of Bar Harbor and business owners over the cruise ship passenger cap ordinance. Now, that ordinance would limit cruise ship passengers entering the town to 1,000 per day. Court proceeded today at the Margaret Chase Smith Federal Building with many Bar Harbor residents called to the witness stand. Today, witnesses included the Harbor Master Lieutenant Christopher Wharf, who testified that his role would be to make sure passengers on cruise ships docking in Bar Harbor are counted, but he would have no role in enforcing the ordinance. He said in court that any violations of the ordinance would involve a minimum $100 fine levied against the pier owners, not the cruise lines or passengers. Many Bar Harbor residents were also called at the stand, and they, many of them describing conditions of the downtown area on cruise ship days as more congested, frustrating, and potentially dangerous compared to non-cruise ship days due to the number of people crowding the streets. Now, those in favor of the ordinance said it is a means to reclaim control over the town, while plaintiffs argued that many people living in Bar Harbor rely on heavy tourism for their livelihood. Court was in session for over six hours, and it is unclear when a decision in that case will be reached. More than $35 million for Maine's lobster industry in fiscal year 2024 was officially approved by the Senate Appropriations Committee today. It now awaits consideration by the full U.S. Senate and House. Senator Susan Collins is the vice chairman of the Senate Appropriations Committee and helped advance the measure. She says, quote, flawed and incomplete data is being used to inform regulations, creating unnecessary burdensome requirements for Maine lobstermen and women. This funding would support Maine's iconic lobster industry by improving the incomplete and imprecise science upon which the federal government rule relies, end quote. Bangor Savings Bank Foundation has awarded Northern Light Acadia Hospital $200,000 to help expand access to behavioral health for Mainers. The grant from the foundation will support the Acadia for All campaign, which includes the expansion of inpatient facilities. A new 50-bed inpatient pediatric wing is currently under construction. 50 existing patient rooms are being upgraded to private adult inpatient rooms, allowing the hospital to fully utilize utilize its 100-bed license. Mainers throughout the state have seen rate increases on their electricity bills. Today, the Public Utilities Commission explained the rate increases and the decisions that led to them. Devin Dagnalt has more. It certainly is never fun to be the person